Jacks. That's our word. We're your hosts, the Reverend Internet Jim Jesus and the anarcho yakalist Nick Hazleton. Brought to you by Bitcop and Fiend Phone. Music by 3chainlinks.com until our composer finally gets around to making that song. We're still waiting. Uh, by the way, it's a new flaggetry month. And uh, that means we have a new flag that you can go and have made. This is going to be the Jeffrey Tucker Gadsden flag. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, you can go to lawbirds.com and look at it and find out how you can have it made and everything like that. How are you doing, Nick? I'm doing great. Right. I'm doing great. So uh, are, are you feeling the, the Trump the Trump energy now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got me all excited. I yeah. want to make America great again. Yeah, I'm, I'm making this podcast great again because I'm actually taking out all that <laughs> stuff about Bipcot and Fiend Phone because everybody knows, everybody should know about it now. And if you don't know, it's all plastered up on the show notes and everything else like that. I don't, I don't know any other podcast that sits there and goes, "Wow, isn't this uh, Creative Commons license just great?" Let's talk about it for thirty seconds every show. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. So, I mean, if you're interested, you're interested, and it seems like more 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 people know about it now. So, you know, what's the point? You know, uh, it, it, it's I, I can see why it's on the fiends because you know they're the one selling it, but we're not selling it; we're just using yeah. it. So. You know, we're we're big yeah. fans of it, but yeah. I mean, how many podcasts have you know who sit there and just ran ran went on for about a minute every show about how great, you know, standard license is? <laughs> I can't. <think> of <laughs> no, no. All right, so let's talk about Trump because Trump. Uh, there was a GOP debate the other a uh, few days ago. Um, a few days ago, and I missed it. <laughs> you Good. missed it, and then they also had a Democratic. Uh, what was it? It wasn't a debate. Um, I forget what they called it, but they sat down with Rachel Maddow. Each one, all three, they have a whole bunch of people to choose from, um, and they all sat down and were just having a little conversation with Rachel Maddow while she threw him some softball questions. And it was really boring. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> But the GOP debates are always lively because they're always fighting. Uh, uh -huh. So Trump, uh, one of the questions, or one of the things that was brought up by one of the other people, I think it was Kasich, uh, was upset that Donald Trump wanted to go around and deport all the Mexicans that were here illegally. And uh, he was like, you know, Donald, uh, you know, I like Ike. You know the phrase, I like Ike. Dwight uh, Eisenhower, great president. I love him. Big fan. Door door, my door, my doorman. Not a big fan so much, but uh, you know, I'm a big fan. I like Ike. But he he basically had a program where he deported a bunch of Mexicans, and they all stayed stayed away because after the third time he did it, you know, he sent them more south of the border. But um. Uh, actually, actually, we could just play what he said. <laughs> if he is elected. Yeah. Moved a million and a half illegal immigrants out of this country. Moved them just beyond the border, they came back. Moved them again beyond the border, they came back. Didn't like it. Moved them way south, they never came back. Eisenhower's policy. <laughs> so, you'd never heard about Operation Wetback, which is what he's talking about, <laughs> which is a terrible <laughs> name, but that's what they called it. Uh, that's what they called it. They called it Operation Wetback. I didn't choose the name. Um, but uh, what do you? What have you been seeing on this? Because you just now started looking this up. What do, What do you know about it so far? Well, I, nothing. Nothing really. It. Uh, I'm kind of reading the Wikipedia page, and uh, I I read the intro. It's kind of interesting um, how the director of the immigration. What it's the Immigration and Naturalization Service, Joseph Swing. He got the Mexican government to cooperate. So hey, maybe maybe Donald does have a plan, a, a point with that he can get the Mexican government to help out and build a wall if they're willing to to help out and move these people back. But but the problem is a lot of them. Uh, there was a big problem with it because there was a lot of mistreatment and abuse. In fact, there's a section on Wikipedia called mistreatment and abuse. Um, not just because they're calling them wetbacks, which is you know a pejorative racial <laughs> yeah. racial slur. Uh, but apparently, a lot of them were like deported out in the middle of the, out of nowhere, and, and some of them ended up like dying of starvation and uh, uh, dehydration from being in the middle of the freaking desert. <laughs> And this is this is what he wants. <laughs> <laughs> this is so ridiculous. 
I cannot believe it. Yeah, but you know, th- this whole mass deportation theme seems like a bad idea. It seems like you'd spend more money trying to get all these people back over over the other side of the uh, other side of the wall and then build a wall than it would to be just you know d- dole out these these uh, social security programs. It, it seems as though, and uh, a lot of these and um, of all people. Of all people, Bill O'Reilly called him out on it. <laughs> Bill O'Reilly was saying, like, this is absolutely terrible. You can't do this. The courts will never allow you to do it if you could anyway. And, you know, thank God. <laughs> like, you know, this is, what are you doing? Oh, jeez. It's hard. It's hard to think of what to say, huh? <laughs> I don't. Yeah, it's it's just ridiculous. I I almost want to see him try it, but at the same time, I know that if he could have any level of success, it would be pretty. It would be pretty bad for the people, right? That'd be. I I don't want to see that happen to any illegal immigrants. Yeah, you don't want them to drop, right. drop in the middle of the desert. I don't think anybody sure. does. But no. he was praising this program on the debate. You know, and he Jeez. likes Ike. Yeah. He likes Ike. <laughs> so, I mean, like, I think that's been talked to about death. I mean, even Bill O'Reilly is talking bad about it. So I think, I think that's all we needed to say about it. But <laughs> yeah. you, you have his platform up, and uh, there's lots of interesting things in there, isn't there? Yeah. Um, let me pull up his uh, U.S trying to trade reform um <laughs> china they're destroying us <laughs> china 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 i don't know why i looked up doland j trump but <laughs> doland. <laughs> yeah so he wants to, to he claims he wants to bring china to the bargaining table um so they he wants to call him out for manipulating currency as if the united states hasn't and uh, it wants to protect the American ingenuity investment by forcing China to uphold intellectual property laws. And uh, I, I'd love to see him try this. It's, this would be pretty interesting. Uh, and he wants to stop doing, uh, what, what do you call, ah, dang it, what is the word? I hate it when it happens. So he, he wants to stop, uh, he doesn't want the Chinese to take American jobs away. And mm. uh, I'd love to see him try to do that. But he says he wants to put to end to sweatshops and pollution that uh, steal American jobs from American workers. And yeah. then he wants to strengthen our negotiating position. <laughs> and uh, well, so I, I do like. He's the master of the deal. He wrote a book about it. It's a bestseller. You should read yeah. it. It's fantastic. It's it's not <laughs> as good as the Bible, but it's pretty close. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like this, this though. He wants to put more military presence uh, around China to discourage Chinese adventurism. Uh, that's interesting. I don't know he, what that he's, is. He's just kind of what is push that? them. Chinese adventurism. So I I do know this about China. They they have been doing a decent job at uh, going out and expanding uh, where they're doing business. So they actually go out. I believe they've done stuff in Africa even. I'm, I don't have any resources on that, so you can totally call me out if anybody knows differently. But So he wants to, I guess he just wants to strong arm them from uh, doing what uh, we've been doing forever, which is, which is interesting. Now, you said something earlier about how China like doesn't respect intellectual property, and it's kind of funny some of the things that they do. Yep. Um, I've, I've heard your, I know we've all heard of the Apple Store. Uh, the fake Apple stores that are all over China, uh, where you can go and buy fake fake iPhones, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, they're totally fake. And it, it, it looks like you walked into it, it, like a, a really want to be Apple store when you see the the videos and stuff of them. When <laughs> when they show it, it's kind of like it's Apple, but not quite. <laughs> There's something wrong here. <laughs> but um, yeah, they they have a big problem with that. But I don't I don't think they recognize intellectual property. I know. Um, Russia does not. Russia doesn't uh, look into do that sort of thing, and you know there's like a big piracy thing out there, and uh, there's nothing they can, nothing we can do about it because you know they have no intellectual property law. <laughs> so you know people just torrent whenever they want to watch a movie or something like that, and there's no you know there's no MPAA that comes and sues people. And then Matt mentioned something, and I I looked into this, and it was fascinating that they have like these 
companies that are named after like terrible things. Like they had a Helen Keller eyeglass uh, <laughs> company, <laughs> and it was like, yeah, they just you know. And, and then when they were confronted about it, they said, "Well, her personal shortcomings uh, have nothing to do with us." <laughs> <laughs> personal shortcomings china's crazy but um that's great yeah and what was this about sweatshops uh he wants to shut them down he wants to shut all of them down uh he says i, I think his exact words were on the on this um thing was that he wants to shut down sweatshops and pollution havens stealing jobs from american workers yeah no more sweatshops or pollution havens uh, because he he doesn't like the uh, what did he says China's illegal export subsidies and lax labor and environmental standards. So he wants to shut them down and therefore in the process would reclaim millions of American jobs. Well, what do you think about the sweatshop and, thing? Are you familiar at all with sweatshop economics? Not really. A little bit, but. I mean, not much. <laughs> you don't know much. Okay, so um, yeah. sweatshops are a good thing, and shutting them down would be absolutely terrible. China has just recently got like half of their population, uh, or between them and uh, India, have gotten half of the world's uh, extreme poverty like eliminated because of these kind of sweatshop things. And people think that like sweatshops are terrible. And they are. They are for us. But the United States ha was basically founded on sweatshops. Like, that's how we got from a worldwide poverty across the board to having, you know, any kind of luxury whatsoever it was because we started out with sweatshops. And we had a harder time and a longer time doing it because we didn't have the technology to bring us out of it really quickly. Whereas these little uh, countries that are have you know, that are developing countries, they use these, these sweatshops as in order to, like, like a step up in order to get back, you know, with the rest of the world. And when we come in and say no more sweatshops, they, uh, that, you know, they just go back to grinding poverty. And the option for these people is either sweatshops, which actually pay a wage where they can actually eat and afford housing and stuff like that, or subsistence farming or child prostitution. And that's, that's the choice for many of these people. And when you take, when we think like, Oh, we want to in these sweatshops, what you're actually doing is saying, we want to promote subsistence farming and, and, you know, sex trafficking because that's the end result of it. I mean, that's not their intention. I'm not saying they have malicious intent, but people don't understand these things. And even the, even these like major groups that want to like stop, uh, sweatshops say you just can't go in there and take take it out you can't do that that's that's like the worst way to do it and that's because they tried yeah so yeah donald yeah, trump so there is you go definitely on the left <laughs> <laughs> of a lot of uh, the other candidates i'm sure they're not interested in any of these things but uh all right go on well I, I, i'm sure they would they would be interested in in trying to get china to play by america's rules i guess i'm sure the rest of the republicans would appreciate his some of his stances here uh, i think it's it's interesting on how he uh wants to go about this and i don't know enough about foreign relations with china to say he's he's completely stupid here well um, we can say but, he's stupid <laughs> <laughs> maybe just not on this okay sure um so yeah he's, he's complaining about how china is trying to manipulate us and tr to try and control us and i don't know if he's right there um but he but it, he'd like to kind of strong arm china a little bit more and uh i, I don't like that from uh from a stateless point of view, I think that's just a terrible idea. Uh, I don't see why we need to really fight China because that's not the the issues aren't that they have sweatshops and that they're taking our jobs, right? It's that we have uh, stupid laws here. It's mm -hmm. not their fault that we have bad laws uh, like the minimum wage and uh, business taxes and 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 whatnot like that to keep us from having uh, jobs here. So. I think he's going at it the wrong way, like any status would. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
All right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the, the sub. Like, so he wants to definitely increase tariffs with them. But uh, I can see where you mm. were coming from. Um, I, w- I was going to say this, and then it had a brain fart. So. <laughs> but oh yeah. So um, the point is, is like we have all these hardcore regulations. Uh, if you want to start a business, there is like all kinds of things you have to do, and it's uh, it's a hassle and it's a barrier to entry. And these big corporations want to create all these rules so that like someone like me who wants to do to sell stupid cards about you know libertarian drama have like all these hurdles to jump over, and you know that's that's how it works. And then so people just go, okay, well screw this, you know, I'm just going to go buy from China because it's cheaper to just buy stuff through China and then retail it here. And that's why we have it here. But, you know, you just can't say, like, well, China's the problem because they're not the problem. <laughs> it's, it's, the, it's the American re- regulations that we have, these mountains of ma- regulations. And there's, like, a video of uh, Milton Friedman walking past all the, the, the regulations. I've, I'm sure you've seen this video, have you, where he's walking. Uh, he's got, like, a little stack of regulations. Like, these are the regulations in the 1700s. And then he walks by and he's like, this is all we have today. And it's just like taller than he is. There's multiple stacks of them, and that was in the '70s. You can imagine what it is now. Um, so yeah, the, it, it, you can't blame China for, you know, basically out competing us when it comes to regulations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and good luck trying yeah. to stop them from using coal. <laughs> good run. <laughs> what a joke. We use coal. Everybody uses coal. Yeah, but they you they're terrible with their coal. <laughs> like sure. we we at least try to make it clean, quote unquote. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, they, I mean, they can't really afford to do that, right? It's. I mean, I don't like that. Yeah, they're filling the the air with smoke. That's not that's not good. It's not great to breathe in uh, coal smoke. But you can't. Yeah, they they kind of need to do that for now. Like yeah. like what we were talking about. Eventually, you know, we just gotta help them come along, and they'll get better. As uh, as they progress, because that's just the way um, economic. What it, uh, another one of those words? Came in, <laughs> economic progression happens. There you go. <laughs> development. Developers. Um. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this whole thing is just absolutely silly, and uh, y- you know, you, like developing countries, you just can't go in there and say, "Hey, you have to adopt all these green technologies in order to gain energy," because they can't afford that, so they have to use these small things. And China, they have another thing on top of that where they just don't care. <laughs> They're just like, "Oh, we're going to burn <laughs> the crap out of coal, and there's nothing you can say about it because we're China," you know. But yeah, that. and they got this I'd, I'd... weird kind of liberal Chinese thing going on or communist thing going on it's like a weird combination yeah but uh yeah so what 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 about the veterans administration reforms that will make america great again (laughs) yeah so he he'd like to reform veterans affairs and uh i mean veterans affairs sucks yeah uh it's not fantastic and everybody says they want to help fix it and everybody has been saying that for a long time it seems uh but nobody ever does it they always say uh, they're so, going to fix the tax code too, and um, mm-hmm. <laughs> that never happens. It just never happens. So it, uh, he has good intentions here. Here, where is the Trump plan? Will it says ensure veterans get the care they need wherever and whenever they need it. Support the whole veteran. And I don't. What does that mean? Support oh, okay. the whole no. veteran. So, yeah. So he's meaning not. Uh, not just physical health care, but also uh, addressing things like PTSD. Oh, okay. I thought it was like, we just don't want to fix the, the, you know, the <laughs> no. left leg. We want to get the right leg, too. <laughs> Can't ignore the left leg. <laughs> Jeez. And then he wants to make the VA great again as part of his plan. <laughs> was it really ever great? I don't, I don't think so. I, I don't think it ever was great, no. My sister actually so used I, to work as a nurse at a uh, VA, and she used to always tell the stories about how much they hated Bush because this was back when Bush was president. And they were always saying like, oh. you know, he, you know, he made the VA terrible, and and then they would you know say like, well, it was always terrible, but he made it even more terrible. <laughs> and that's kind of like the. And now there's, I guess they would be saying the same thing about Obama, but yeah. So it's always yeah. been terrible. Yeah. So he wants to make it great again. But I I love this what was planned to make the VA great again is he wants to fire the corrupt and incompetent VA execs, executives uh, 
and then he wants to modernize the VA. I don't know what that means. And he'd like to empower the doctors and nurses to ensure our veterans receive the best care available in a timely manner. So that's that's interesting. I'd love to see what his plan is to on how to figure out how to fire the corrupt and incompetent. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of all these like British politicians who say, oh, we're going to cut down the lines and waiting time at the NHS. And it just gets mm-hmm. worse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I like that he's... I, well, I don't think that increasing funding for any sort of... Uh, what do scientific studies from the government really ever helps but he does have uh good intentions in in trying to help treat traumatic stress disorder um so hopefully well no not hopefully i don't i don't know he, <laughs> we'll see how that goes if he ever wins i don't know i don't want to say hopefully like he's got any good intentions because i don't know what the repercussions for any of this is because none of these plans are very specific right you can't say oh this is exactly how he's gonna do it he just says ah this is a good idea yeah maybe we can get it. melody helmsley to get on this va thing to help her post-traumatic stress disorder from twitter that she got from twitter um <laughs> You probably have no doubt. I don't know, that. I don't know who that is. <laughs> Look it up afterwards. It's it's a funny story. Anyways, so <laughs> so like, what does he mean by he wants to make it more modern? Does he want everything to have like gold? Because I know it like he loves everything covered in gold. He actually has a Trump Tower that I actually walked into, and like everything is like marble and gold. <laughs> it's, it's it's the most bizarre thing. Like everything that he sells is like gold. Like even his board game was like gold leafed. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, uh, I don't know. I don't know how he really wants to do it. But I, I guess he he says okay, transform the VA to meet the needs of the 21st century service members, and he doesn't. He just doesn't explain that very well. Um, no, I don't. He just wants to expand <laughs> VA services for female veterans and ensure the VA is providing the right support for this new generation. So he doesn't say how he's going to do it. He just says that he's going to do it. Oh, a, a, a um, politician with vague platitudes. I can't, I can't, I've <laughs> never heard of this. What, where is this? <laughs> yeah. And, and then he, he also would like to, uh, get some, he wants to better support our women veterans. So he wants to get some OBGYN doctors in because, uh, it seems like, I guess they don't have, uh, an, enough of them. Like Ron Paul? Are they going to get Ron Paul in there now? (laughs) (laughs) He's he's the only guy I know that I know that I can say a joke. (laughs) Anyway. (laughs) (laughs) Trump will clean up the VA's finances so that the current VA budget provides more and better care than it does now. If that's never going to happen, you're dealing with multiple layers of bureaucracy. Uh, Oh, Mm -hmm. I'm reading from the wrong one, but it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> uh, empower the caregivers to ensure our veterans receive quality health care quickly, and uh, that's never going to happen. Yeah. yeah. Well, so where they, there's his modernize the VA. So he wants to he wants to put more money into getting better technology. Okay. He so there'll be the waiting lines the for that too. So. Yep. Yeah. We'll just have we'll have more lines. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of reducing the well, lines, we'll just have more of them. But he also he also wants to eliminate the lines. He wants it to be super convenient um, th- that people will be able to uh, view the... Okay, now he doesn't say he's going to get rid of wait times. He just says that they should be able to know what their wait times will be. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I'm so glad we got Trump in here. It's like, I didn't know that I was waiting for... <laughs> 15 days for a checkup but now i know i have 14 days left out of my 15 days thanks trump by the way i'm gonna die in three days (laughs) uh va clinics in rural and other underserved areas hire more veterans for veteran care which probably might, yeah. You know, look, the whole thing about the veterans thing is like we screwed over the veterans, especially the ones that came out of Vietnam. And the least they can do is try to make them whole again by giving them a job. But do you really want to throw them into a bureaucracy, <laughs> like a bureaucratic yeah. job, like a VA job? Jeez. It's terrible. Like, like I said, my sister worked at a VA, and she said it was like horrible. But you know, the pay kind of made it worth it, but not really because she hasn't worked there since the Bush administration. So. 
it's a good example of how how well you know uh, how well the pay versus crap that goes on <laughs> is worth. So, yeah. what about tax I, reform? Well, first I want to say I, I think it w- is going to be amazingly expensive to get what he wants done. Uh, oh, he'll help help Mexico not, pay for it. it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Maybe he'll get Vietnam to help pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> so on his on his taxes, uh, he wants to simplify the tax code like everybody else. He wants to provide tax relief for the middle class. Uh, he wants to grow the American economy, and he doesn't want to add any debt to our deficit. Uh, so that's just like everybody else. Yeah. Um, and then he. He does have, I, I don't think it's anything really like an actual uh, tax plan. Uh, like all politicians, uh, he just kind of complains about it. Um, but, but I don't know. <laughs> I like the 999 plan. That one was the best. <laughs> it was super simple from Herman Cain a couple of years ago. So here's the problem. <laughs> the, the problem with instituting a national sales tax is a bad idea because the only thing that's going to happen is that the government's going to go, oh, now we have the ability to tax at you know, at, you know, retail at a retail tax to everything. So uh, we're just going to you know have have the regular tax that we have now. Plus we're going to have a national income tax. Nine nine nine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a great idea, but it did make it through Ways and Means <laughs> Committee. So we're we're just gonna we're just gonna have you know national sales tax now. That's the, and that's why I had a big problem with the uh, fair tax because in order for the fair tax to work, you'd have to have a constitutional amendment in order to <laughs> eliminate the uh, income tax. But the, you know that's not going to happen. <laughs> you know, you know, they're only going to do is just go. Oh, we can just have a national sales tax now. Yippee! Mm-hmm. And so we're just going to have, have more taxes. Yeah, fantastic. Well, that's the way he's going to pay for his wall. Okay. Um, but no, it doesn't really help that uh trying to give relief to the american middle class uh the one thing i do uh like is this end the unfair death tax the death tax is annoying when you have people die and you have to pay all the taxes with their uh, he says he wants to eliminate it yeah that's all he has it just says uh, it just we're just going to eliminate it Mm. Oh, that's because he's rich. That's all he cares about is just making money, man. Yeah. That's yeah, the, the death of tax is terrible. <laughs> yeah. They're going to tax someone right. dead. <laughs> like, you know, right. it's like, they already... It's like, did, come on. They already paid their taxes. <laughs> they already died. That's the two inevitabilities. Now you're going to have another inevitability where they're going <laughs> to... So death taxes and death taxes are <laughs> now three inevitabilities of life. <laughs> And then, uh, then he at the end he says, "Hey, we're we are fiscally responsible, I guess." Um, he wants to get rid of the corporate loopholes. That uh, like, yeah, he just wants to get rid of them that cater to special interests, and and uh, they want to end corruption. I guess is what he's shooting for on a lot of these things. Um, and he'd like to s- start to. Not he wants to. What, what do they call this? He's not going to let the corporations outsource anymore, so that they can uh, cheat the tax system. Uh, and then he wants to. What is this? How is this going to work with his, with his companies? Like <laughs> a lot of his know. stuff is like over, you know, outsourced anyway. Like his, they said, his ties were made in China. Um, what is this vodka was made in another country? I think. Like, <laughs> like really. He's one to talk. Yeah, and I wonder. That's 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 why you you just know that he's not going to be able to do any of this. And even if he could, he wouldn't, right? Because he doesn't care. Yeah. Otherwise, he would be he would be taking it upon himself to actually make a difference. But I, and I, it surprises me because you would think that maybe uh, he'd, he'd look and see exactly what's actually harming his companies and look at it. Well, let's tackle that. But I don't think he cares. I think what he's going to get in there for is to actually try and benefit his own his own interests, just like every politician since the dawn of time. Yeah. So 
I don't know. He's got a history of that. Uh, uh, there was a dump Donald Trump movie. Have you seen this or heard of, at least heard of no. it? So it was like a documentary that was um, it was made in the 80s, and they tried to get it released, and Donald Trump sued it into oblivion, and the guy just recently got it resurrected and po- uh, po- posted online for free. I think it's called... I'll, I'll post a link in the show notes, if I ever remember. I'm terrible with that, by the way. Uh, <laughs> but uh, there was a movie, and it kind of like shows you all the kind of corruption that he used to do. Like, he had... Um, like bought like uh, or not bought but got a hold of like some contract from the government in order to rebuild that ice skating rink he didn't like and he 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 did it cheap and he did it like he was said he was going to do but what what he did was he like he like tricked all the contractors and so they ended up building this this ice skating rink for the city and then he it didn't cost him a cent because he didn't pay them because he had like a little loophole in his contract where he didn't have to pay them and (laughs) then he was just like yep took money from the city and was like yep there you go and it was like well, many cases where he was doing stuff like this, like yeah, and like a lot of his business adventures were just terrible. Like the the Trump build uh, the Trump casino that he had in uh, uh, Atlantic City, yeah, like bellied up and yeah, he had like two of them that went belly up. <laughs> Jeez, yeah, they call him out for going bankrupt and all that. I don't know a whole lot about uh, Donald Trump until now. Until he started running, I started paying attention to this. So I, I just, I, I was like, okay. Yeah, I thought he was a clown as a person. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I didn't. Yeah, I never took him seriously. I never watched the, the Apprentice or whatever his show is. Okay, I only watched the Apprentice because Pendulette was on, and then once Pendulette <laughs> was fired, I just stopped watching it because that was the only thing I really cared about. Um, yeah, it was it was good when Pendulette was on. And then we also got some good yeah. ice cream out of Pendulet. So that's that's one good thing that we got from the whole Trump thing was good ice cream that Pendulet designed, <laughs> which he won't eat now because he's on a crazy diet. But anyways, mm. uh, back to the tax plan. <laughs> like I don't under, like I don't even know why we're reading the tax plan. Like everybody says, like they're going to have like, this radical change for a tax plan. They're going to simplify the code. They're going to make it easy. But they can do it because there's all these like interests in like all these companies that uh, do taxes for people. And what are you going to do? Like throw them all out of work just because you have this new radical tax form? No. And they have lobbyists, H and R, uh, HR Block, and stuff like that. They all have lobbyists. You know, it's not Sears. Who, who runs that company? I can't remember. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, the, you know, they're, they're, these are big conglomerates. You know, that that do accounting and stuff for people. And you think they're just going to like belly up just because you know Donald Trump wants to change? The tax code, it's not going to happen. And even if he could, uh, well, even even if he could get around them, they're still not going to get around Congress because they're all paid off, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's the ridiculous thing about the whole presidential race is that no matter who is elected, they have to deal with Congress, and you're not getting anywhere uh, through them if you're going to try to do anything crazy. Yeah. Like trying to simplify the tax plan. <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> tax reform. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They all say they want to do it, but they never do it. I think that's like the one like universal thing that they always run on. It's like, oh, we're going to simplify the tax code. Mm-hmm. But not just president. Great jobs. But the Senate, Congress, they all run on these positions. And they always, uh, they always get in the office and then they don't do nothing. And it seems like they all have the same plan. You know, we're just going to make it a no, simple, no loopholes. And yeah, it doesn't work. Yeah, no, it never happens. So that's the one thing that he had nice to say, and he's not going to be able to do it. It's not the he he has uh, he seems to have some genuine uh, cares for the for America though. Yeah. <laughs> um, what are the, so one of these interesting things um, is that he he seems to be pretty big here on. Uh, Second Amendment rights. I mean, he doesn't really talk about it, as far as I know. So he's not. I mean, I'm not saying that he's big on it, but he seems to be pretty lax with possession. Right? I think mm-hmm. that he he doesn't like uh, the way that um, federal background checks work because they don't work. Um, criminals don't care about background checks. They just get them. And uh, I I think that it's interesting. I don't. He says he wants to fix our broken mental health system and. Uh, how are you going to do that? I don't 
I, I don't think he has a plan and nobody does. And people have been talking about that for a little while now. And it's just not going to happen. But he does want to stop uh, the ban on uh, guns and magazines. He doesn't like the idea that uh, of assault weapons, right? This, this term that people like to use to, to scare people and confuse people. Yeah, and, and, and a lot of, there's like a lot of guns, too. yeah, that use the same caliber of rifles, shoot just as fast, and have the same magazine size and everything like that. That aren't called assault rifles. It's just if it looks scary, they want to ban it. You know, if it has uh, yeah. the what is it, the shoulder thing that goes up, then ban it. Yeah, the shoulder <laughs> thing that goes up. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, he he would like it so that. The military could carry firearms on the bases, you know, that stemmed from the the shooting at the military base because nobody was able to defend themselves. weren't there He'd two of those? It. I think there was like two shootings well, at a military I, there base. There might have been more. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. At least recently that I know of. I'm, I'm sure there's more, but <laughs> than just those two. Yeah. yeah, and then he'd also like it so that uh, concealed carry permits should be uh, allowed in in every state. And federally, so he thinks that there should be a, I guess, a, a permit that allows everybody to have uh, concealed carry or the right to carry in any state, uh, and that's that's interesting. Yeah, but I don't see it happening. I, I think the reason why we don't really hear about it too much of the GOP debates is that most of the most of the candidates are kind of on board with gun rights as far as GOP goes. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are really good. The Democrats, on the other end, spent like most of their their debate, their the first debate, arguing about who uh, you know who hated uh, or who the NRA hated more, and they were like using it to boast. Mm -hmm. But yeah, usually they're just kind of like, oh yeah, we all agree. You know, we should you should have a gun. You should be able to conceal carry. <sighs> Except for maybe that fat guy from New Jersey. Maybe he has a problem with that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, we don't want anybody comp competing with the real mob. I mean, not. Not just the government's a mob, but he, you know the mob that he works with. Oh, we're not. Oh, just, he works with. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, he's from New Jersey. Everybody knows yeah, it. From everybody yeah. from New Jersey, New sure. York. If you're a politician. Mm -hmm. You're in bed with the mob. It just, it just comes with the territory. <laughs> and if you're not, you're not going to be elected. You're not going to be a. Uh, you're not going to be a uh, governor very long. So. <laughs> Make him swim with the fishes. So yeah, he's pretty good with the, with the guns, I guess. Uh, but he wants to, he wants to dump more money. So he wants to dump more money into uh, get, uh, keeping companies from g doing business overseas. So he wants to high high tariffs, uh, which that mm -hmm. won't work. Uh, Veterans Administration. He wants to like boost the heck out of the veter. You know what? There's only like five things on his platform positions on his website. And the VA yeah. it has its own thing, <laughs> its uh -huh. own page. I thought that was bizarre. But uh, you know, then he wants to spend money on all the stuff. He wants to reduce taxes, but there's an argument to be made for less taxes, more income. But um, mm -hmm. the, then he wants to dump like all kinds of money in immigration. <laughs> we just talked about how he wants to deport, like all, like spend all this money deporting all these immigrants, and now. This is his page. I wonder if he's going to mention Operation Wetback. <laughs> Which, by the way, I should probably mark this as explicit, right? <laughs> yes. But I guess it's in a historical context. But anyways, yeah, the three yeah. principles of Donald Trump's immigration plan. A nation without borders is not a nation. Um, a nation without <laughs> laws is not a nation. Uh, a nation that does not serve its own <laughs> citizens is not a nation. I, that's kind of what I want, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, we don't want a nation. Yeah. Well, I'm all for laws. I'm just for polycentric law. I'm just not monocentric law. I think that's where he's... Right. Yeah. yeah. Freed Rothbard. Make <laughs> Mexico pay for the war. For many years, Mexico leaders have been trying to take advantage of the United States by using illegal immigration to export crime and poverty from their own country, in their own country, mm -hmm. as well as other Latin American countries. Uh, they've even published pamphlets on how to illegally immigrate into the United States. Yeah, no, it doesn't. <laughs> huh? No, really? I didn't know that. I, I, well, I guess this, I'm, I'm just going by whatever Donald Isn't, Trump says. I'm sure it's yeah, true. If he says it, then it must be. Well, he says it, and then he links to a New York Times article. So, 
I don't know. <laughs> there could be some truth to that. <laughs> it's kind of like two sides of the coin saying the same thing. So, mm. yeah, that's um, funny. I hope they do. Or deport all these people? <laughs> or no? No, no, <laughs> no. To give them. I'm gonna get you to say something to racist today. <laughs> <laughs> I already got you to say wet back. Anyways, uh, <laughs> a Mexican manual for illegal immigrant or for migrants upsets some in the U.S. But uh, yeah, I don't know. They have um, they have a real big problem with socialism down there, and uh, all kinds of corruption at every single level. I I don't know if you've ever been to Mexico. I doubt it. Uh, so I was in Mexico, <laughs> in Tijuana, mm-hmm. and this was like before the the drug cartel started like kidnapping people, and it was crazy. But um, we we walked out of a bar, and as like as soon as I stup- stepped out of the bar, someone snagged me, <laughs> and it, it was a, it was a uh, federale, and you know he was demanding that I'd pay a bribe, but I ended up like convincing him that I don't have to, and was sorry that I walked out of the bar. It was only for a second. And uh, yeah, it was just terrible. But you know, they 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 definitely try to bribe you. I've heard stories of people like walking them to the uh, the ATM to get a, get uh, their bribe money out, and yeah, it's it's super corrupt. But you know, yeah, what, what my do you want? Uh, my grandpa and my dad actually lived in there when my dad was a kid. There, yeah, my my grandparents' family or my dad's family lived in Mexico for a while, and they had that issue <laughs> all the time. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. So they had Mennonites in Mexico? Is that what they're saying? <laughs> no, my no. We don't. Ha- we're not. I thought you weren't blood. Mennonite. <laughs> no, we're not blood Mennonites. Oh, I see. I see. <laughs> <laughs> reformed Mennonites. <laughs> they reformed in, in Mexico, right? Okay. So <laughs> I'm not seeing anything about um, triple the number ICE officers. Um. Okay. <laughs> Nationwide e verify. Um, mandatory return of all criminal aliens. <laughs> Detention, not catch and release. Def- defund sanctuary cities. Enhance penalties for overstaying on a, overstaying a visa, which, by the way, is how most illegal immigrants get here. Is they get a, a legal visa to come here. They stay and they mm-hmm. say, and then they just don't go back and they have a kid. The, the anchor baby. Oh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, yeah, so building a wall is not going to really stop it because that's how most of them get here is through legal channels and then break the law. Um, but not only that, but have you seen these videos of uh, how easy it is to get over these walls and everything? I, I've seen people climb them, yeah. Yeah. They climb them, dig they under just, them, or they just go through them. a hole. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's I don't know how long the border is, but <laughs> really, you want to try and and build a wall across that? That's crazy. Yeah. Well, they have they have some that are like walled off, but not all of them. Uh, not yeah. not the whole thing. And uh, you know, you can still you can still dig under them, still hop over them, you know. And then they're just going to have a bunch of old people sitting around on beach chairs, going, "Oh, there's one that coming over the border." It's called the uh, INS because we ain't doing nothing. We're the Minutemen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, anyways, uh, I think that's pretty much it on trial. I think that's all he had. Yeah. Was just immig- immig- like those. Golly, that's right, though. No? Yeah. And uh, get involved. He doesn't want your money. Oh, but he was saying in the debate that he's like, he's like, I'm not going to link my website because I don't need money. But there's a donation page, of course. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it's and it's highlighted blue just so you'll notice it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we have a donate page, but I really don't care. <laughs> and if you do donate to it, I'm not going to like run for president and deport your family. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to like buy a beer or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that's just bizarre. Oh, shop. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see what kind of wonderful cuz I always thought that um Rand had the worst shop of all of them. <laughs> and you'd think I'd like his shop the best, but he had like um, a little NSA camera thing that you put over your your laptop or monitor with the you know the the laptops that have the little uh, hole for a uh, webcam. There we go. That's the word I'm looking. See, see now you got me doing it. Uh, so he yes, has like this little little plastic thing that he's, you slip over it, 
and it pre- prevents the NSA from spying on you. I think they call it NSA blocker. And it was like 20 bucks or something like that. It was just for a little piece of plastic that goes over your webcam. Get a piece of paper. And then he had a, a, a hard drive that doesn't work with Hillary's name or something or face on it or something like that. It was like, really? <laughs> for $100 for a, for a hard drive that doesn't work. Okay. <laughs> That's funny. And then, oh, well, we can get that stupid hat that he wears all the time. <laughs> Make America great oh, I love, again. I'm looking at it now. Yeah. <laughs> Return of the Rand t-shirt. I love that. What is this? Rand Liberty Bear. A giant Oh, Rand you're, you're looking Paul at the Rand Paul one. Christmas. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're talking about Ron Paul. No, I'm talking about... Like, <laughs> No, I was talking, talking about, about Rand Paul, but I, but I'm looking at the Trump one. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. No, you're looking I'm at the looking Rand at the one. Rand <laughs> so we have to make a great America great again under the Trump store. Uh, that stupid kind of like trucker hat. I guess it's like a weird trucker hat. <coughs> it's actually like a cheap hat. Like that's what like old people wear because they're cheap. I'm coughing like crazy. <coughs> I'm not going to edit this out because you can just deal with it. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, we got the Make America Great Again. It's like all the, the type of hat that old people wear because they're cheap, you know. Um, visors. And then he got such nice baseball caps. <laughs> the hunting one is great. <laughs> it's a camouflage one. Yeah. Make America Great Again. <laughs> we got a visor. <laughs> uh, speaking of hunting, uh, how is the things on the farm going? I'm sure everybody oh, wants to know about that. Yeah, we uh, still have pigs and yaks. Uh, the yaks are doing pretty good. Uh, I don't. Did I tell the story of the crazy yak bull? No, I should do it again time? anyway because this is all fascinating. <laughs> and I'm sure everybody wants to hear everything again. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> if you talk to people about yaks, most of the time they'll be like, "Oh yeah, yaks are great. They're they they're pretty docile. They're really nice." And uh, in my experience, until like the last few months, they have been fine until i decided to get a new uh cow and we got a new bottle fed bull so this this cow was when you stress any animal out they're going to freak out and so this cow was not happy because we were trying to move her from her home to our place and so you were deporting it (laughs) we were deporting it (laughs) operation uh, yak back (laughs) (laughs) and so she charged us a couple times that was interesting i did not get hurt and uh, this bull that we have, he's a bottle-fed bull, never, ever, ever bottle-fed male, bottle-feed male animals, especially ones that can be aggressive. Goats, you might be fine, but pigs and yaks, do not mess with them, and cattle too. Just do not be nice to your small bulls. You can pet them and stuff, and you can let them know you, but do not let them know that you are friendly. Make sure they know that you are a person and that you can uh, push them around and that you are the boss. So anyway, this did not happen with this bull, and we we got him. He's a very beautiful bull. He's worth a lot. He's white and black, so that makes him more valuable uh, than, than the other black ones. <clears throat> so he... We had some issues with him. He got out. He was being aggressive because it was rut season. So I was I was backing off. I was like, okay, I'm gonna let him do his thing in the in in his field with his ladies. And then they got out. Oh. They got they all got out into my yard, and uh, I had just me, my grandpa, and my uncle John uh, here on with me. We were I think <clears> they were spending the night, and we were about to eat, sit down for dinner. And my grandpa, it's like we were, well, no, we hadn't started dinner, but we we we're gonna make yak burgers. <laughs> and uh, just so I could show him what it was, and then he says, "Hey, Nick, there's yaks out in the yard." I'm like, "Ah, oh, come on, <laughs> gotta deal with this today." I hate it when animals get out; it's the worst. And so I had to go out there and get them, and we were messing them, uh, around. I was I was sick and tired of of dealing with animals that day, I guess, and I was not practicing uh, effective herding techniques. Instead, I was just trying to to round them up and get them in. Instead of taking it nice and slow, you get them to run, which is just not a good idea. And I did that anyway. And eventually, uh, my my uncle got just too close to the bull. And I, 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 I guess I didn't tell him to stay away from the bull because you just don't mess with bulls. <laughs> and, but he got too close and he was probably yelling at him or something. And uh, I come around the corner and I see him get tossed up in the air. Like he's he he got a lot of air. Like it was crazy. 
<laughs> I, I couldn't believe it. And he and he let out this scream, and I thought he was dead. So I, I ran over, and I'm about to like try and get the kayak, the bull, off of us or off of my uncle. And I'm about to hit him with a stick to try and get his attention. I realized, well, he's, his attention's on my uncle John, so hitting him's not going to help. And by the time I really even had half the time to think that, I was picked up and tossed too. And oh, it just geez. sent me spinning in the back. It was yeah, it was crazy. And uh, the only thing I really remember out of the experience is, is seeing Uncle John in the air, hearing the scream, freaking out, running to kayak, about to hit him in the neck, and then thinking, oh, that's not a good idea. And then his face and mine after I, I got somersaulted. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he, that bull could have killed us both if he wanted to. I don't know why he backed off. But uh, th- that was definitely the closest to death experience I've had. That was, that was fun. It, w- it was interesting. <laughs> And so since then, he has been a real turd. I, I just cannot deal with him. Like, it's impossible because he just wants to fight people now. He knows that uh, he's, he's bigger and that he can, and it's rut season, so he's just excited all the time. And every time he sees us, uh, he just he comes up to the fence and he starts doing this barking thing. I can't <laughs> mimic a, a yak bark, but... Yak! Yak! <laughs> I think I saw that on Ace Ventura. Anyways... So he, he does this thing, and he's got some weird, like, war dance he does. So he, he'll... <laughs> war dance. As soon as he sees you, yeah, it's, it's, I can't... I don't know what it is. It's just his... It's, it's, a, it's the weirdest thing ever. As soon as he sees you, he starts kind of doing that barking thing, and then he'll, like, put his face on the ground and uh, with, like, his forehead, kind of put his horns in the ground, maybe, like, get one horn and kind of, like, dig into the ground. And he'll do the the bull thing where they they face off, where they they show you uh, their profile to make them look big. Yeah. And so he does that, and then he what he does, he, he keeps walking slowly. He does this very slowly as he's walking towards you, and he'll put he'll get down and put one of his back hips on the ground, and then get back up, and he does it a few times. Mm-hmm. And he gets his, it's just the weirdest thing ever. I don't, I don't know why. And it doesn't make any sense to me. Why would he put his hips on the ground? And like, he sometimes half lays on the ground and then gets back up immediately. It's crazy. And uh, I, I've never seen him run until recently where uh, he shook a gate until the chains fell off of the gate. So he just walked through. So he walked out onto the road and <laughs> my, me and my dad had to go get him. And we were, I was so scared, like, oh, if he starts moving, if those yaks get to somebody's house, it's going to be the worst. And uh, we, we can't herd the, the yaks because he's there. And if we try and, like, do any sort of thing on the ground near him, we're screwed. We're dead. So my dad gets in the truck, and, and I have to be bait. So we have to, we have to, you have to be bait him bait? into the... Oh, bait. Uh, <laughs> I thought you were yeah. like, wait. I thought you said you didn't smoke weed, man. <laughs> Anyways, <go ahead. laughs> I was like, wait, why do you have to... Like, oh, man, don't even trip, man. He's, he's high. Let's just go. Let's just get you back home, you stoner. I can... Don't... <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> No, I have to, yeah, so I have to be the bait to get him in. So as soon as he sees me, he starts coming towards me. So I knew that, and I keep my distance. You know, I stay at least 30 feet away. And then uh, as soon as he gets in the field, I start backing off more and more. And, and I turn my back on him for a second as I'm looking where I'm going because I'm, I'm trying to – I'm watching him as he comes towards me. And he's, he's got a good distance. And all of a sudden, he just starts running for me. This is the first time I've ever seen that bull run. He's been so pampered, he never just had to move <laughs> in his life. And he starts running, so I get super spooked. <laughs> I'm like, oh, God. I'm like, no. I don't, I don't want to deal with this today. So I dive in between barbed wire fence that we have. We've got a four-strand or five-strand barbed wire. And I dive in between the second lowest uh, space that I have on there. And I, get, I didn't get torn up too bad, but I, I nicked my hand and I ripped my favorite jacket i was really pissed off uh, but well, i mean now you need alive. to get yourself a lulbert sweater <laughs> yeah, hey here we go <laughs> and be the only person that will ever buy one <laughs> <laughs> i actually want to do that i'm actually going to get thinking... one <laughs> but anyways yeah <laughs> but i think we're going to be the wanna... only people that are ever going to wear these i don't think what the heck Walberts, I was gonna, weird faces all over it. Anyway, <laughs> I was gonna see since it has my face on it. I was gonna see if I could get people I know to buy it. I was gonna buy like twenty of them and try and sell them for thirty bucks. I think you're selling them for twenty five or whatever. Uh, I don't know what they are. I I basically I just have it so I think I make like a dollar or two dollars off 
any one that I sell mm. or pretty much everything on my store. It's pretty much like a dollar or something or something like that. But I think it, the for the sweater version, it comes out to be like 44 bucks without shipping and before shipping. So I'm like, hmm. Well, it's got my name on it. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I've been hesitant my to buy it is myself. Enough. Yeah, well, if, yeah. if anyone wants to donate, I'll gladly wear one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I've had people like say like, oh, like because I just got into periscoping because uh, the Seeds of Liberty plot or not Seeds of Liberty, um, Roads to Liberty podcast. You know the guy R.J. Parker. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, he's been like trying to get everybody to get on Periscope, and I hopped on it, and people were like, you should do a Periscope from Sherry's Ranch, which is like one of the you know, uh, brothels out in Vegas. And I'm like, no, because mm. one, I don't have the money to do it Two, Why would I want to drop that kind of coin on it? And three, they're not even allowed me inside the building with the, with the device on. Cause I actually have gone there just to get a drink. Cause I was that's like, it's up the road from the, um, the post office box that I use. And I was like, Oh, I might as well go check it out since I'm here. Just get like a gin and tonic and then drive back home. That seems like a brilliant idea. Uh, <laughs> so, so I went and just visited and they were like, and I just kind of got, I got like the tour and everything, but they were like, you got, you can't bring, put, take your phone out of your pocket, you know, no pictures or anything. So I was like, eh, whatever. But yeah, it's, it's super expensive to do anything. And I'm like, hey, if you really want, you know, me to do a periscope from the parking lot be- and talk about my experiences, you can, you can, by by all means, donate away. <laughs> don't expect me, to, don't expect me to shell out money so that you can hear me talk about it. You can do it. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. I don't it. even know what I don't even know what Periscope is. I've heard RJ talk about it, but I don't I don't know what um what what is it? What is it? Okay, so it's kind of like a live streaming app where you can um you connect it to your Twitter account and then like you can do like a live show and I think it stays up for like twenty four hours or whatever and it's streamed live so everybody can see it and people can chat back and forth with you. And it seems like for the most part it's just a way to get people to uh talk and what's it? Russian acrylic text on your on your. <laughs> if you want to see like people talking Russian, there you go. Uh, but uh, you know, there's a lot of Americans that hop on there too, and so you do it, uh, and then it announces to everybody that that's following you on Periscope. Hey, so and so is doing it, and it also announces on Twitter so they can watch it on their computer if they want. And then you know it could be of anything. So if you're getting harassed by the cops, or if you just want to, you know, like Archie Parker does, just smoke marijuana on <laughs> periscope and, <laughs> and eat palm granites there you go uh <laughs> yeah i i you know the, the, the big the big joke for, with me is that i've been periscoping with my cat <laughs> so, like you know like why are you periscoping with your cat like, because i'm at home and if i don't my cat annoys me so um yeah so i've, I've been doing that but you know people have been telling me to do it at the brothels and i'm like <laughs> If you want, if you want to donate and get, you know, if you want to, you want to see the misadventures of Jim, you're gonna have to pay for it because I'm not dropping that kind of coin on something that ridiculous. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it, it sounds like it'd be fun, but uh, it's not something that I want to spend my money on. I got right, right now. I need a new computer. If you, if you really, want to, <laughs> if I really want to spend that kind of money on something, it's gonna be a computer, not a woman for a, for an hour. Sorry, it's just not gonna happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I just think that that's hilarious. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I don't know. Per- Periscope's fun. I definitely recommend it. Someone's looking into that. Right. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't farm. Uh, you know, I just I work at a nursing home, so I don't have any really interesting stories. And the st- stories that are interesting, I can't really tell because of HIPAA uh, regulations. So oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> my uh, well, <laughs> when my parents put uh, my grandpa and grandma in the home, uh, it was interesting to hear what they would say. As uh, you know, they, they weren't they didn't quite lose it by that point. But uh, my grandma was funny. She'd tell us weird stories about what was going on in the nursing home. <laughs> I can't remember anything off the top of my head, but uh, it was it was just it, it wasn't like hilarious. It was just kind of funny that she was excited about some of these things happening. Like yeah, they talk about the. There's a lot of interesting things that happen. Play the violin. We we hear all kinds of stories and see all kinds of things. Um. Yeah, but we can't really talk about. It. I mean, I could talk about it with my with my coworkers, but yeah, at work. But yeah, that's, no, that's you it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, I've I've seen I've seen things that are just absolutely terrible and absolutely hilarious on all fronts. So, yeah. 
All right. So, did you have anything more to say about Yaks or Trump? Uh, or anything? No. no. <laughs> so should we just wrap this up? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, by the way, we didn't. I didn't stop. Uh, I we didn't like pod fade. Uh, I know it's been like what two weeks since we did an episode, and it's not because we found out we've been trolled, and you know now we're trying to pod fade away. And like, no, yeah, that whole that whole <laughs> Jedi thing. Did you hear about that? The last episode we did. Mm-hmm. So the last episode, we did a show about uh, the Jedi thing and how there was a big hashtag campaign to, like, how, you know, it's reverse racism or, uh, you know, like, it's it's anti-white or something like that. (laughs) It turned out to be a giant, like, uh, 4chan hoax. I mean, there's some debate whether or not it was really a a, a 4chan hoax or if they were using or, or popularizing something that someone actually was doing there was no but it, for for the most part we admit we were totally trolled but it was <laughs> it made for a good podcast so <laughs> <laughs> but uh, i guess uh, may, maybe donald trump is trolling us maybe he'll come out tomorrow and go like uh y- yeah this is always a big joke i just wanted to see if it was going to be more popular than my steak line and apparently it was i mean you guys all wanted to vote for me but you know bye suckers thanks for the money and <laughs> enjoy your stupid hat then we're gonna have to take this episode <laughs> no i'm not taking any episodes now. <laughs> At one could dream right <laughs> this is just an elaborate troll <laughs> a presidential candidate wooing for the days of operation wetback <laughs> all right so i guess we should wrap this up then um do you want to pimp your website while we're <laughs> totally um, so my website is an-yak.com. That's an-yak.com. And libertariansagainsthumanity.com. Uh, fire cell going on. We're getting rid of it. all the volume threes and ending the project. So if you want it, nine bucks plus shipping. Um, yeah. So <laughs> now's the time to get it. Yeah, because there ain't going to be it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's done. Uh, I'm, I'm discontinuing the project. So. Yeah. All right. Have a good one, man. Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists like Barack Obama and Al Gore taking credit for the web while trying to take over the web? Are you disgusted by experts whose concept of the internet is that it's a series of tubes? Take back the free market of computing by encouraging software developers to adopt the BIPCOT no-gov license. The BIPCOT no-gov license allows any use or modification except by governments. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango, dot org. For some reason in, in this country, and in a bunch of the Western world, it's okay to just judge. Hey, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. Computer programmer Derek Slopey and I have created Fiend Phone. I'm using Fiend Phone right now to talk with and record one of my co-hosts in real time. Take it, Davi. Hey, this is Davi Barker, and I'm a thousand miles away from Michael, but we sound like we're in the same room. We sure do, Davi. So, Davi, please tell the nice people more about FiendPhone. FiendPhone is free, no-gov software that opens up a global world of possibilities for collaborative, high-quality, remote voice media production, and I'm digging it. People can try FiendPhone right now at FiendPhone.com. But we're also raising money to vastly improve FiendPhone and vastly improve independent talk media worldwide. So go to FiendPhone.com to help out. Who will build the audio roads? We will, with your help. That's FiendPhone.com, F-E-E-N-P-H-O-N-E.com, Foxtrot, Echo, Echo, November, Phone.com. FiendPhone, I never knew remote audio could be this good.